Hi everybody, thanks for checking in today. As always, I hope you're doing well and I miss you. Um, today we're looking at uh, reviewing graphing exponential and logarithmic functions. Um, and I emphasize graphing here. Um, we're not gonna worry about the, the algebraic relationship or the solving um, just, just yet. Today we're just gonna focus on our graphs so that you can work on your um, graphing project. So um, with exponential functions, um, remember this is kind of our growth or decay um, relationship and logarithmic functions and exponential functions have this inverse relationship here uh, between the two. And um, one way we can think about that is if we were to switch the X and the Y, um, whoops, the X and the Y positions um, of our exponential functions, we would end up with this logarithmic relationship. Um, so just a couple of uh, reminders here. Um, exponential functions and logarithmic functions both have a base. Um, so we use that B to represent that base. And they both have transformations that we could refer to. And those transformations are um, pretty familiar as far as transformations go. Um, we can have our H and our K, which represent a horizontal um, and vertical uh, transformation, um, as well as a stretch or a reflection with that A value um, for our exponential functions. Um, logarithmic functions have a very, very similar set of transformations. Um, Right, we could have a stretch uh, and then a horizontal transformation and a uh, vertical transformation as well. Um, so as we uh, look at some examples and just some strategies here, we're gonna keep that in mind. But the transformations we've been reviewing the last week, two weeks um, are exactly the same for exponential and logarithmic functions. So, Let's remind ourselves of exponential functions here. Um, remember, this is raising something uh, to a power. So if we're doing this in a, in a calculator, like a TI calculator, we would use that little caret key there. Um, so if we substitute values in y equals to the power of x, so um, 2 to the power of negative 1, we actually get 1 half. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2 to the power of 2 is 4, and uh, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Uh, so again, it's just a matter of substituting values and um, graphing. Let's see, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8. And then we have a smooth curve connecting this. Now, remember, exponential functions have what's called an asymptote here. Um, that tells us that the graph never crosses that horizontal line. In this case, it is um, the, uh, excuse me, the x-axis. Now, notice that this associated logarithmic function, log base 2 of x, has the same exact base as the exponential function we just graphed. So a strategy here is if we know the exponential function, we can really easily graph the logarithmic function by switching, whoops, the x and the y values. So obviously I could use my calculator. Um, Desmos is really great for evaluating logarithms, but an easy way to do this is just to switch my x and my y values. So I would have 1 half, negative 1. I would have 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, and 8, 3. So then I can graph those coordinate points, 1 half, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, and 8, 3. And again, another smooth curve here. So you'll notice that as inverse functions, um, a couple of relationships here, one right, it's like a reflection over the line y equals x. Um, and then we have another asymptote, this time a vertical asymptote. Um, so one thing to just keep in mind is like the, the domains and the ranges are basically switched um, for one another here. Uh, 
but the long story short is that if you can graph an exponential function, you can graph a logarithmic function. So as far as graphing logarithms go, I, I think there's a couple of quick steps here. So first is to find and graph the associated exponential function. So that's like what we just started with. Um, we we used x, or excuse me, 2 to the power of x to graph log base 2 of x. And then what we did was we switched the x and the y values, right? Those are inverse functions, um, and so we, we can do it that way. Um, then we would uh, graph the new coordinate points. So again, I don't even have to really graph the exponential function. I could graph it, obviously. Um, but as long as I know the coordinate points for the exponential function, I can find and graph the coordinate points for the um, logarithmic function. Now, if there are transformations, and we're going to look at some examples of those, if there are transformations, then what we want to do is we want to graph the parent function first. Remember, that's that's no transformations, right? No transformations. And then move each point according to the transformations. So for instance, if it tells us to go up two units, we're just going to move every unit or every point, excuse me, up two units. And then last but not least, we're going to graph or excuse me, finish the graph by connecting with a smooth curve. Um, remember, these graphs are continuous. It's not enough to just have the coordinate points. Um, we also need the curve that's associated with it. So we're going to um, do a couple of, uh, we're going to do an example together just to see how all of these things connect. Um, and then I'll let you practice on your own. So I have uh, example A here, the exponential function 3 um, to the power of x. So just making a table of values right is always going to work. Um, it's a kind of a foolproof strategy here. And so if I'm using my calculator or doing this in my head to substitute those values, 3 to the negative uh, 1 is 1 third, 0, 1, uh, 3 to the first is 3, 3 squared is 9, and 3 to the power of 3 is 27. So. Um, I'm not going to be able to graph most of these points, but I can still get a pretty good idea of um, what this looks like and then 2, 9. And again, I want to pay attention to that to that asymptote there. Um, it's very close to the x-axis. Technically, it's never exactly touching it. Now, um, example B, um, this says 1 half times 3 to the power of x minus 4. Now, notice it is exactly the same um, as 3 to the power of x, except for a couple of transformations here. So based on our uh, memory of transformations here, this is going to um, scale by a factor of 1 half, right? That's, that's a multiplier of 1 half. And it's going to shift everything down one, oops, not one unit, Four units. Um, so it's good to keep in mind those transformations. Obviously, I could just substitute these values in using my calculator, um, and I, I wouldn't have any any issues at all. Um, so it it doesn't really matter how you do it, whether you're um, really just using the transformations or whether you're using your calculator. It is important that you know those transformations, um, but whatever it takes for you to get the graph on the paper, that's that's what it takes. Um, so if I uh, look at some of these some of these values here, um, negative excuse me one third, and then that's one sixth um, minus four is do, 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 negative. Uh, 23, 6, um, so maybe that's not going to be the most helpful point. Um, if I'm using to the power of 0, that's 1 times 1 half. That's 1 half minus 4 is negative 3.5. Um, 3 to the power of 1 is 3 times 1 half is 1.5. Minus 4 is negative 2.5. 
And then let's see, I've got 9 times 1 half is 4.5 minus 4 is 0 0.5. And then finally 27 um, times 1 half is 13.5 minus 4 is 9.5. So this graph will look just a hair different. Um, and that's okay. Again, whatever it really takes to make it happen um, is no big deal. So uh, let's see, I'm going to go 0, negative 3.5, 1, negative 2.5, 2, 1 half, and 3. Let's see, 9.5, and then this uh, negative 23rd, um, 6 is really close to negative 4. So notice that that, um, that minus 4, hopefully your graph looks a little bit better than mine, that that minus 4 or that transformation down 4 units um, actually shifted our asymptote for this um, from the x-axis down to the line y equals negative 4. Now if we look at uh, the last two examples here, now we've got a logarithm. Um, and I'm just going to recopy the table um, that I had up above for uh, y equals 3 to the power of x. Oops, that should be 2 and 3, so that's 1 third, 1, 3, 9, 27. Um, because notice, right, if this uh, is 3 to the power of x and I've got log base 3 um, of x, I can just switch the x and the y values here. So that's 1 third, negative 1, 1, 0, uh, 3, 1, 9, 2, and 27, 3. Oops, that 27 got a little bit out of control there. Let's fix that up. So again, if I know my exponential function, it's pretty easy to graph the logarithmic function even by hand. Um, so 1 third, negative 1, 0, 3, 1, 9, 2, and 27, 3 is a little bit off the graph, just a little bit there. That's okay, I've got enough to graph my smooth curve and see what's going on there. And again, I've got a vertical asymptote, right? It's never going to cross um, this vertical line, uh, x equals 0. And then once again, I, I now that I have this, this parent function for the logarithm, I can look at this transformation here. Um, that plus 5, remember, is going to go to the left 5 units. It's the opposite direction. And um, up 2 units. So I could look at all of the points that I have for my parent function log base 3 of x and just move them accordingly here. Uh, so for instance, this is uh, 9, 2. I'm going to move left 5 units and up 2 units. So that will be 4, 4. And then I've got 3, 1. Left 5 units will be negative 2. And then up 2 units will be negative 2, 3. Um, so I can kind of keep doing that. So uh, 1, 0, this will be negative 4, 2. Um, and then my 1 third, negative 1. Let's see, going to go back 5 units, up 2. Be at a um, very close to uh, negative 5, 1. It'll be um, negative 14 thirds, 1. And then again, graph my curve, keeping in mind that when I say I'm going to the left 5 units, I'm also transforming that asymptote. So. Uh, my graph does not go to the left and to the right forever, right? It, it does have a limit um, to that domain based on those transformations. So this is just a very quick overview, just reminding us of this, this family of functions. We'll do more with this in the next couple of weeks, but I want us to get a, another um, you know, glimpse of this before we get too much more in depth. So there are kind of two sets of practice problems here. Um, if, if you're not in a place where you have time to do both, uh, I encourage you at least to do part one. Um, you can check your answers here on OneNote or using Desmos. And um, again, I miss you and I hope to hear from you soon. Stay well and hang in there.